What's up, YouTube? Zachary Michaels here. I'm an actor, and this is An Actor Reacts. Today, on Aaliyah's birthday, we'll be reacting to her sophomore album, One in a Million. Let's get into it. Before we get started, if you're new to my channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and leave a comment below. One in a Million is the second studio album by Aaliyah, released on August 27th, 1996. The album featured production from Carl Solo, Jay Dibbs, Jermaine Dupri, Darren Lighty, KG, Vincent Herbert, Rodney Jerkins, Craig King, and Daryl Simmons, but was primarily produced by Timberland and Missy Elliott, who went on to become frequent collaborators of Aaliyah and helped form her signature sound. The album featured several guest vocalists, including Missy, Timbaland, Tretch, Tavarius Polk, and Slick Rick. Six singles were released, If Your Girl Only Knew, One in a Million, Got to Give It Up, Four Page Letter, Hot Like Fire, and The One I Gave My Heart To, which became the album's highest charting single, peaking at number nine on the US Billboard Hot 100. The album garnered many positive reviews and is regarded as a breakthrough project for Aaliyah as well as Missy and Timbaland. One in a Million debuted at number 20 on the US Billboard 200 chart, selling 40,500 copies in its first week. 22 weeks later, the album reached its peak position on the chart at number 18. To date, the album has sold over 3 million copies in the US and over 8 million copies worldwide. Okay, so first off, happy birthday, Aaliyah. Uh, you know, I thought that One in a Million would be the perfect album to react to for her birthday since, you know, it's her breakthrough album and so many people love this album. Plus, I've had y'all waiting on this one for a while now. Sorry for the wait. So let's just get right into the album. Interesting. Into the next level, the new world of funk. I like it. You got good intros. Okay, Missy. Electronic, spaceship, vibey, funky. Great for an intro. Futuristic a little bit, which definitely is really a sound. That's the word, futuristic. Beats for the streets. Uh, not much to say about this one, but it's a great intro. She has great intros. I remember the intro from uh, AJ Nothing But A Number Two. I love that one. I love this one. And it kind of feels like a, a an introduction to the, the, the new Aaliyah, you know, the new sound of Aaliyah. I love how futuristic it is, which is definitely something that I already kind of know that this project is. And it had, you know, Missy on there doing Missy things, which I loved. Aaliyah floating throughout. I love the spelling of her name. It just really funky track. Uh, and it makes me really excited to hear the rest of the album. So let's go on to Hot Like Fire. Okay, yeah, this is, I know the, the other version. This doesn't feel familiar. Mm. This is interesting. Kind of feels like kind of beatnik, jazzy. Like this feels like they're in a jazz club. The black shades. Especially that like piano back there. It's just 
so smooth vibe I am Like that. That feels like a little hip hop flavor there. Interesting. Now let's watch the, the video. Yeah, this is the version that I know. I'm not even too familiar with this one, but I definitely recognize it. I love the background there. Hey. Oh no, that's not her, but that girl looks a lot like her. Oh, that's the dude from Medea. Right? Oh no, no, Beauty Shop. Yeah, that's him. I thought it was a little faster when I remembered it. She looks great. That's no surprise, though. Oh, Kim. Oh, all of uh, Junior Mafia. She's so smooth with the dance moves, too. It's just like water out of her. I don't know who you are all, but you're probably somebody. Hot Like Fire. Uh, it actually turns out that I'm not too familiar with either version of that song. Uh, though the, uh, the the single version does sound a little familiar, but I kept waiting to hear like, Hot Like Fire, give me what you got. And then I went and looked it up after I listened to both and it turns out that that's actually a Chris Brown song. Um, so definitely not Aaliyah and it doesn't even sample it because I tried to look that up or at least nothing that I could find. But uh, that all being said, I like both versions of this. Um, I like how the original one felt kind of like a like you're in like a poetry jazz club. Like I see people with black shades at the mic and like do 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 and like the piano and stuff throughout. That was like a really interesting choice and I really like that but I do see kind of why they like remixed it uh with the uh single version because that's a more I guess that's a more like young vibe that's a more like young 90s vibe like it still kind of had some elements of the original like it still could have fit in that jazz scene but it definitely did feel more uh young and definitely more danceable um I really like the, the 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 video as well for that like one like I just said it's more danceable and Aaliyah is just so smooth that the dance moves, like dancing just kind of flows out of her. And it, it, like the the choreography wasn't even like super complicated, but it just, she makes it look so smooth and good the way like dancing just comes out of her, you know? Um, and then I also liked kind of like it being black and white and then like 
her energy bringing in that red the the color and all the cameos and stuff in the video missy and timberland of course you know they were there doing ad libs in the song and they you know they were in the video plus that dude from beauty shop and i'm sure there were some other people in there oh um, lil kim and uh c's and junior mafia were in there and you know some other people from the time who i didn't recognize but uh like the video like uh both versions of the track i don't know if there's one that i prefer more because like i said they're kind of two different things i like the vibe of of the original but i also like how danceable the uh the the single version is so both really good uh yeah i think that's all i got on hot like fire so let's go on to one in a million Now I know this one. I haven't seen this video in a while though. It's so good, just like this. It's like kind of haunting almost. And now I can recognize like Missy's voice there at the beginning. Maybe you don't know what you do to me. Between me and you, I feel the chemistry. Oh, I never even noticed Missy and Timberland back there. Shout out to the production as well. So unique. I love this scene. Personality and everything you do. I'm looking at the upscale versions. It's so clear. Hey. That's just so iconic, honestly. That guy kind of looks like a baby. Now it makes sense that Genuine's in this video because I was always so confused by that. But if he's part of that whole crew. But I've just never like connected Genuine and Aaliyah in my head. I love just the vibes. Like late night sexy. Get just so many, so many good little things in the song. Mm. Such an iconic song. Let's listen to the remix. I've never heard it before. So kind of a futuristic funk kind of vibe. Kind of sounds more. Is that a bass? Sounds like a frog back there. And everything you do. 
I prefer the melody of the original. How old is Genuine? Or was he here? I think of him so much older than her. Okay. She said, pay attention. Good looks too. One in a Million. Uh, I really love that song. And that was an interesting remix. That was my first time hearing the remix. Um, I didn't like love it, but I did like it. I thought that, that uh, the beat was interesting, especially that like kind of frog type sounding thing or like that bass line, whatever it was, that caught my attention right off the bat. I do wish the, the overall beat would have changed up a little bit more. Like it was different from the original version, but I wish like it wasn't like the same kind of thing on loop. I wish it kind of, you know, had a couple of different variations throughout and that would have made the overall remix a little more interesting for me. Um, but I did like it. I liked, I liked, um, I liked Genuine, like adding in a, like during the section in the middle when they were kind of going back and forth. I thought that was interesting and their voices actually complement each other pretty well. Um, like I said, there just aren't two people that I like associate together in my head. So it's funny to kind of know that they were in the same camp around this time. Uh, but anything else? Oh, and then I do think I like the original version better just because I enjoy the melody more. Like the, the remix is a little more, a little more up tempo and her, the way she's singing it is a little more staccato. Like the, your love is a one. And I like the more like, smooth sultry your love is a one and like that that original version is just so iconic um the, the the production on it the you know like the crickets in the background like who does that and all the different just little sounds and i like the like the ticking and missy's background vocals and Leah's like sultry delivery um it's just I, I definitely prefer the original but i might be biased just because i know and love that song so much already that hearing this remix, like, what, over 20 years later, it just doesn't compare it to the original for me. Um, but really great track. Love the video. Super iconic. She looked amazing. So many great looks. Uh, just, just really great, iconic song with an interesting remix. It's not bad. It's not, it's not how, like, on uh, AJ Nothing But A Number... Like, at your best, I love the album version, but then the remix, I was, like, not here for it. It's not that type of situation, but I do still prefer the original version of uh, One in a Million. Uh, but, yeah, I think that's all I got on this. Let's go on to the next track. For some, that gives me, like, I was going to say hip-hop. I know the name Tretch, but I'm not really too familiar with him. I like him. I 
love the jazzy hip hop feel. They're like New York hip hop. Here we go. You're going back and forth. Yes, vocal. Her voice is like so floaty, you know? really like this track um uh, first i like the just the kind of throwback uh early 90s hip-hop feel because this this album came out in 96 so this is more to the mid to late 90s and i feel like hip-hop sounded a little different or was going into a different sound by then but like this feels like early 90s hip-hop like early like new york it just i really like that vibe mixed with like the the jazzy feel so it was like Early 90s hip hop mixed with jazz, with Aaliyah added in that R&B flavor. A uh, really, really interesting track. I really like Tretch on this too. I thought he was a great addition to the record. Uh, and it felt more like a, you know, like rap song duet type thing instead of, I thought he would just like, you know, give that verse at the beginning and then it would just go into Aaliyah. But he was like there throughout and his presence was really felt in a really good way. And like, um, I know the name, but I don't really know him musically at all. And this was like a nice introduction to him, like his flow at the beginning. And like, I, I loved him from the start of the song and I was like, oh, okay, I see you. But then like when he would like, I want a girl like you. And then Aaliyah come in with that, oh, here you go. Like, I love them like going back and forth. And then like later in the song, like she's singing something and he's backing her up. And then like, I love their kind of trade-offs throughout the song loved his his voice and flow throughout love just the overall vibe of the song love how floaty Aaliyah's vocals were it worked so well for adding that that hip-hop flavor kind of the same thing that i was saying with the two uh rap collabs that i reacted to from her yesterday like that she she's she's able to to, to bring in her own essence but not feel out of place at all and bring in that r b element to the to more hip-hop leaning song and this was a great, a great duet for the two of them. Really good. Love the vibe. Love the production. Love both their voices. And then the way that we would kind of, you know, feed off, feed off of each other and trade, go back and forth. Uh, really, really great track. Uh, yeah, let's let's go on to uh, if your girl only knew. Okay, now I definitely know this one. That town boy energy. She likes motorcycles too, apparently. Here we go like that. Oh, I like it. Oh, look, that's Kim again. I like the two different vocal styles. Like that, like that. that, I love that. I like the visuals too. Like the different colors they're playing with and the black and white and stuff from earlier. Hey! Purple Alcetto is so sweet. Like this is, this is so nice. I feel like this was ahead of its time. There's only having her in color. So funky. That kind of 
church organ in there too. Oh, I know them. I was 702? Maybe? No. They're a group. I know them. I reacted to them. girl only knew um i like this song way more than i even remember um i i, I just hear so many more again i think it's i've said this in the past but i think it's just because like my air has developed more i'm able to notice more things but the 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 the, the song um where to even start okay um love the production shout out to uh timberland and missy like the it's so funky um, like that, the, the bass, especially when we get into like the real breakdown. So I love the like bass line throughout. That was nice. Um, there's so many different like background, like kind of vocals or different sounds and stuff that I couldn't hear before that are just like, so they add nice little touch to it. I love Aaliyah's different vocal approach. Like she had the, give your girl. And then she had when she would be in her falsetto. So it was like basement or up in the, up in the attic. And I loved like her kind of alternating between those two like different uh, vocal styles in the song. Um, what else? I love the kind of um, church organ almost that that would pop up a couple times. Like there was so much going in the, on in this song, and I just really loved it. And not not to mention the lyrics as well. I think it's it's, it's a funny song. Like if your girl, like she's kind of you know she's kind of scolding you and play like I, I just like the energy that she's giving off while still being that Aaliyah like chill cool like she not it's not stressing her but she's like if your girl only knew like she she's able to to to, to, to be stern but still like calm and relaxed at the same time I just love her energy and the the production and the, and the vocals and her falsetto is just so sweet like it's so like light and angelic and it just her vocals overall just float but especially in her and her falsetto and then i really like the visual too really eye-catching uh and like i said it feels like it's kind of almost ahead of its time for like uh 96 i guess this this video came out um like the the black and white and her being the only one in color and then the the colors and stuff switching up and the way that they were playing with the visuals i thought was so interesting um, I liked all the little, the, I like how she has little cameos in her video. Kim is in this one again. Um, I think that was 702. If not, they had the song with Missy. I, I'm pretty sure that was 702 Stilo. I'm pretty sure that was them in there. Uh, but they were in there, probably again, a couple other people. But I just really like the visual. She looked great. I love her, you know, her tomboy swag, cool energy, but still has that, that feminine side to it as well. She looked great, sounded great, loved the beat. Uh, this could probably maybe good chance of being in my top three. It's way better than I remember and I remember liking it too. Uh, yeah, really good track. Let's go on to the next one. Love that. Yes, guitar. Oh, I do think I know the original. I saw that this was an Isley Brothers remake. Didn't recognize the title, but this feels familiar. Her voice is so malleable, and it works so well for this like 70s soul sound too. Oh, she did Isley Brothers on the first album too, right? Or no, maybe that wasn't Isley. Instrument 
meditation is so good on this. Lover. Um, there's something special about uh, Aaliyah covering the Izzy Brothers song, At Your Best, from uh, AJ Nothing But A Number. Love that. Now, Choosy Lover. I love this. Um, I definitely prefer the, 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 you know, the old school, the classic rendition of Choosy Lover versus the new school version. Both were good, but like Choosy Lover, the, the, the old school part of the song, it's just that instrumentation is so good. Like, Unmatched is something about that the, having the band there with all the different sounds and everything And it, it just had that real like classic soul feel and Aaliyah's voice worked in that so well It was just like chef's kiss, you know Loved everything about the old school and then the transition into the new school wasn't bad I think it's just a case of like not comparing to to all that was going on in that original and just the the the, the kind of the, the the soul in it I guess the soul in that original versus the more kind of like hip hop beat almost like the boom do do boom boom, boom that the, the 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 new school version had Aaliyah sounded good on both it's just that there was something extra special about everything that was going on with the old school uh but yeah I think that's all I got on Choosy Lover. Like I said, Aaliyah covering an Isley song is something real special. Part of me really hopes that she has an Isley Brothers cover on that uh, on her self-titled album, just to like com complete the trifecta. Uh, but yeah, let's go on to uh, "Got to Give It Up." I remember this video. Um, my sister had that DVD, and this 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 song was was on it, or this video was on it. I hear the you know the the Billy Jean sample here too. Yeah, one second, can I get a hit of Seattle Rocks and uh, Long Island Ice Tea? Thank All you. Right. And I tell you, the club was yeah, you was like like everyone was chasing my fine ass, but when Alea walked in, the whole place went bananas. I like that. Uh, 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 in the back. His voice too. The cowbell. And I saw that there's two different versions. I feel like I know the other version of this, like the remix, Aaliyah's remix. I really love this one as a kid because I was super shy and I was like, oh, she's shy too. I can be successful. Ooh, baby. Aaliyah and 
knows how to remake those classic songs. Production. I love that they have Marvin Gaye in the video too. Yeah, the version I remember had a little more like, it was like this, but had some more to it, you know? man it's so malleable like it adapts to so many different sounds i love her with these like classic 70s covers like these funk songs uh, she really does them justice and not a lot of people can do that um i, I love the the original M marvin gay song um and then i love Aaliyah's rendition of it as well and i love that she like had him in the video uh, even as a kid, I didn't know that this was uh, his song until like that DVD and my parents were like, oh, you know, that's a Marvin Gaye song, da 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 da. Uh, but really great cover it, I think. I've definitely heard the original now, but really great cover. And then, but I'm, like I said, I think I'm more familiar with the uh, remix version that's on that came out with like that uh, behind the scenes DVD thing. Uh, I think, I'm pretty sure that was after her death, but I really like, I, I'm i pretty sure, I haven't heard either one in a while, but I feel like it was a, the one I remember had a bit more, like, a cu couple more elements to it, but I do really like this version. Uh, just really, really good, and I think Slick Rick was a good addition to the song as well. His, like, caricature type voice, and because the song does have that kind of, like, early hip-hop feel as well, his voice worked on it. Um, love, love, love the, the, the instrumentation, uh, same as what I was saying with, um, uh, what's it called, Choosy Lover, like, those old classic soul funk songs, they went in, like, the bands went in, it was just so intricate, love the cowbell and the little different instrumentation in there, really great, from the production to Alita's vocals to the, uh, Slick Rick feature, really, really good song, she, she really knows how to step into that, like, 70s, 80s kind of soul funk music really well uh but yeah let's go on to ooh to my song four page letter like i said this this is my song yeah turn my music up <laughs> up to more up to more up, up a little bit more <laughs> I think I like those videos, like the producer in the studio, like... I just love that effect too, and how it, the sound actually does increase. Just a little detail, so good. Mama always told me to be careful who I love. And daddy always told me to make sure he's right. understood the video concept but Missy on the backgrounds never noticed it before Good slow jam. 
video but just her beauty man there really hasn't been a bad song yet and we're like halfway through the album it's just so good four pitch letter already going into it was was a favorite of mine like a favorite Aaliyah song in general like just so good I, I love her voice on it uh, she's really playing in that that deeper, though she does go into her falsetto in this one too, in, in a couple parts, but she's really playing, playing around in her basement in this. And her voice is just so rich and smooth down there. Like it's like butter, it's just, mm, get it on. Like anytime she's down there, it's just like, oh yeah, like I feel it. Um, Love, love the vocals, love, just love that beat, that mm, boom, boom. Love the production in general, just how how it feels like real late night, real sultry, real kind of sexy, real like eerie, like with the kind of ghost vocals in the background. Shout out to Missy too with the background vocals. I really never noticed how much Missy adds to the to the to the song. Like I remember hearing those vocals, but now I'm able to be like, oh, that's Missy right there. Like and her voice is just so good, and it compliments at least like just really great production overall shout out to missy and timberland and uh, great main vocals um I, I love the video always have i still don't understand what the video concept is i mean it kind of looks like it's like old timey almost and she's like saving her i don't i'm honestly just not really sure i kind of see where they're going but overall i'm like i don't know what this video is but it doesn't take away at all i, I love the video love the song love that you know turn me up a little bit more, a little bit more. Just the fine details in the song. Um, really great. Uh, just, um, what was I gonna say? I was gonna say something. Um, like the video, the kind of Oh yeah, the dancing in the video. She, she again, she's just so smooth with the dance moves. Love uh, her and that guy when they're like in the fire ring. Like I love that part as a kid. I would always like rewind that part when she like drops down and then winds up. Like just so, so good, you know? Uh, and she looked so beautiful in this video, especially. Like I've said it, everyone, but she just looks like so like, ah, like in this video, you know? Um, but yeah, I think I think that's all I got for a page letter. It's, it's was already one of my favorites and hearing it again after so long, it's just, such a great record um but yeah let's let's go on to uh everything's gonna be all right hey yo ronnie you ready because i'm ready okay so leah and dark child <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
everything's gonna be all right. Uh, it's a cute song, I like it. I do honestly though think it's my least favorite so far, um, which is weird because I love Dark Child, I love Aaliyah, it's cool to see them coming together. And then I liked Aaliyah's vocals on it and I liked um, Dark Child, like the the production, like the boom, like the, the, the drums throughout and the like shouts and stuff in the background. But I think just like when I'm comparing it to the rest of the song so far, it's far from bad, but it like the other ones just have so much more going on. Which is funny because Dark Child, just like Timbaland, is like known for like different kind of innovative sounds, but maybe he just hadn't like fully stepped into that yet. Um, like I said, far from a bad song, it's just like comparing it to the rest, like a, you know, like a If Your Girl Only Knew or like a One in a Million. It's like, it's a more a tame song. But, uh, and I do think it was a little too long. Like the, at the end, the chorus just kind of kept looping. They could have chopped like at least a minute off, but... Again, not a bad song, a, a good song, just the least interesting one on the album so far. Uh, but yeah, let's go on to the next track. Classic kind of R and B feel, and some hip hop in there. Mm. Love the vibe of this. It makes me. Think of like the Moesha theme song. this track I really liked how it kind of had a mix of like a classic soul type music feel mixed with like a classic hip-hop feel like you know early early hip-hop with like classic like 60s 70s soul and it came together so cool like it Aaliyah's music in general is just gonna be like real moody and vibey because I feel like that's really where she thrives in that kind of late night atmosphere and this kind of had that mixed with hip hop and soul and it came together so well. Like it, it could be played at a house party, at a cookout, or just like you chilling back, you know, just vibing. Really nice atmosphere that this song was able to create. Uh, yeah, I think that's all I got on this one. So let's go on to I Got Your Back. I really like this one. 
What's that? I'll help you carry. What is that? That's some type of sample or something. Give me like a movie soundtrack vibe too. I got your back. Um, I feel like I've been saying this every song, but I really like that one too. Um, and I've said on a couple songs that they had like a, a some hip hop flavor in there, but this one kind of felt real, like real hip hop, like the beat, how like boom, boom, dun, boom, 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 like how hard hitting was. And then Aaliyah's like her delivery almost felt kind of like for the verses at least, kind of felt like she was rapping with a little melody and you know she drag out words a little bit to sing but the delivery overall felt kind of like like she was rapping until she got to the chorus and then it was more singing like it was almost like uh like she was a feature on her own song like she was rapping the verses and then coming in to sing for the choruses almost so that was just like a really cool composition of the song uh love the feel of it the the instrumentation was really good too it felt like there were like some strings and stuff back there almost uh, love the love the instrumental, love her her confidence on it, her delivery. Like I love the the lyrical content too. Like I got your back. I forget what she was saying at the beginning, but it was something like uh, everybody's like wondering how to keep a man. Is it's not what I say, it's how I say it. Plus I let him know that like I got his back. I just love her, her her delivery there and the confidence that she had. Uh, and shout out to the I'm pretty sure it was the Lean on Me lyrics that she had in there. Uh, like when you're, I forget the the exact part of Lean On Me, but I definitely recognize it. I'm pretty sure it was Lean On Me that they like made a reference to, but that definitely works with the lyrical content of this song. A uh, really, really good track. So shout, shout out to Jermaine Dupri who produced that one and Carl Solo. Uh, really good track from the production to, to, to her vocal delivery and the lyrical content. Really good song. Uh, so yeah, let's go on to Never Giving Up, featuring Tavarius Polk. I like the piano. Step it up. Colored voice. 
not colored as in like black, like colored like a lot of colors in his colors in his voice. Never given up. Uh, I love that. I think that's gonna be a contender for the top three. Um, real good, like R and B ballad. Like they both were singing. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you. I feel like to Tavarius. I hope I'm saying his name right, but I feel like he kind of took the front seat on that one. Uh, his voice so interesting. And I love that y'all told me that he was 14. Like, I forget what reaction it was, but like in the comments somebody put, when you react to the song, just know that he's 14. And I didn't know like what, you know, what that would mean. But listening to the song, now I get it. Like 14, like his voice is so soulful. Like it feels like he's been around for years. Like that feels like a real, uh, what's the word? Like a real, I can't think of it, but like, a developed, like, real seasoned voice. <laughs> like I said, Doring, like, it has, I try, I was trying to say, like, it has so many colors to it, but I was like, he has a real colored voice. And then I realized that that could be, like, you know, colored as in what they call black people back in the day. But um, really, really interesting voice from him. But I, I'm not, Aaliyah stepped up, too. Like, she started off the song a little more in her, like, smooth, sultry, and then Tafarius came on and, like, really killed it. But then, she came back in like, oh, you, you thought like I can, I can, I can, I can run with the best of them. And she really started getting into the, like the nitty gritty vocals. Uh, really great from both of them. Just beautiful song. Love the runs and the, 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 the textures of both of their voices, but especially uh, Tavarius's uh, really, really, really good uh, track. Like, chef's kiss the vocals the production just that that classic r&b ballad vibe um they both did that uh and I, i'm not familiar with Tavarius at all so let me know if he has any other music out or maybe this was like a one and done thing for him i hope not because he's got a great voice um he obviously didn't last too long because i i had no idea who he was but uh, he's definitely got talent, uh, so I'd love to react to some more of his stuff. But yeah, really good track, definitely a contender for the top three. So let's go on to the next song. This feels like something, maybe kind of Neil solely with the like spaceship kind of thing in the back. I like it. Or maybe it felt kind of like beatnik jazzy again. Yeah. Real Neo soul too. Mixed with like that Aaliyah sound. Wait, let me see. Was this produced by Timberland? Yeah. It feels like Missy and Timberland mixed with like Neo Soul. I feel like it reminds me of uh, what's that song? Um, if your girl only knew. Like how things are so layered. Love her runs and stuff. But the stuff is like overlapping. I'm writing you a love letter tonight. Reminds me of that too. You better keep a watch because the mail, man. Like it has that vibe. Heartbroken, uh, maybe the most chill song on an already really like chill album. 
Um, it was interesting. Like I said, it gave me like a neo soul type feel, like Erica Badu, Jill Scott, kind of like beatnik spoken word, like jazz club vibe, mixed with that like Aaliyah, Missy Timberland sound, and it came together really nice. Like the, it definitely made me think of like four page letter with the really with the like the drums in there. Um, and then like the spaceship side of it felt more like the neo soul, but it worked really well. Um, loved her 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 delivery on it. Um, and like I said, it's 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 more of kind of the same, but it doesn't feel um, it doesn't feel like oh gosh another one. Like it feels like yeah, like she's in her element in this real, like real relaxing chill uh, type music. Um, and I, again, just love her in, in her lower register. Love also, she was playing around with like the, vo like there was a lot of, like there she was doing a lot of runs and stuff and how it was all overlapping and everything and layered on top of one, one another. It really, it was like a real full sound and just it like, it fills up the room and just kind of like decompresses you almost just like so much is going on, but it's like relaxing at the same time really interesting track love the mix of the sounds and love all the different vocal runs and everything that she was doing throughout uh yeah let's go on to uh that was heartbroken so go on to never coming back really mixing different sounds in these last couple. This one feels kind of beatnik jazzy too, but like with some island in there and some funk and some other stuff. Like that gives me island, but then that gives me funk. And the kind of vocal delivery is real like jazz uh, uh, poetry club type thing. Gives me like 70s too. Like show enough. Like with a down, 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 down. club especially with her all my ladies I'm not a lady but yeah, 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 yeah. is that Missy I do just the swagger she has super interesting um kind of like i said with uh with um heartbroken except like times 10 so many different sounds in there and different like influences uh, i kind of felt like island with, with the bongos and then it gave me like a, a 70s like vibe with the like how the bass was like the and then it gave me like that jazzy uh beatnik kind of spoken word song that I've gotten on a couple other songs and it gave me um it gave me a bunch of things I can't even remember them all because there were so many different sounds and influences in that one but I really liked it uh the I think that one's for sure definitely going to be my top three because it was just so interesting and so 
different and combines so many different things. And I love how much swagger Aaliyah has, like the swag to pull that kind of song off and like the spoken word parts and the little personality that she's selling and all my ladies and this and and like the lyrical, like oh, I just really love this song, everything about it, all the different influences and in her voice and the, the way she was using it and just the the instrumentation throughout, just really, 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 really great song. Um, definitely going to be in my top three because it was just so unexpected, but it worked so well and she, she pulled it off expertly. Um, love that one. Uh, but yeah, let's go on to the next track. This reminds me of back and forth, kind of. Timbo's got a real interesting voice. I just love when she says her name. Ladies in the house. Uh, I don't have much to say about this one. I did like it though, especially that kind of chill, like moody vibe to it. Um, and I liked uh, Missy's addition as well. Like she, she's perfect for this kind of song because she, with Missy and her voice, she can kind of flow in and out of things. And she definitely did that on this record really well. Uh, not one of my favorites, but a, still a good song with a good like knock to it. Like I see this like at a cookout, you know? Uh, but yeah, let's go on to the one I gave my heart to. I only know the single version, which I reacted to a little about a while back, so go watch that reaction if you haven't seen it. version is a little more poppy this feels a little more r&b soul she definitely re-recorded the vocals Like there's a bigger climax in the single version. Okay, 
she still go in there. That's my favorite part anyway. gave my heart to um like i said i reacted to the uh, the single version back uh for my birthday in september so go i'll put the the, the thing at, like, at the top of the screen and in the script and in the description box so if you haven't seen that reaction go check it out um but i love that version of it like i listen to that one often and this is my first time hearing the album version i did see some people saying that they preferred the album version when i reacted to it before but i think i prefer the single version maybe just because i have more history with that one but this one's uh it's this one isn't bad um this one's more a little slower a little she takes her time a little more on this one this one's a little more like r&b jam um uh, I just feel like on this single version, she goes in a little more. Like, she's she's singing on this one, too. This is probably her biggest vocal moment. Oh, maybe this one and, like, the song with uh, Tavarius are her biggest vocal moments. But with the, the single version of the one I gave my heart to, I feel like she really gets into it. Like I said, I'm pretty sure she re-recorded the vocals because the melody and stuff has changed up a little bit between the two. But, um, I... I Either way, I love the one I gave my heart to this song in general. I just think I prefer uh, the single version. Uh, it's a little, it's, it has a little faster pace. And she really, I feel like she's really pleading on that one. And you feel that passion. Though she does still have my favorite part in this one where she really goes off. You, the, you said you love me, but you didn't love me. And the runs that follow that. She just, her voice, uh, it's so much bigger than people uh, know about or, or that she even lets on because she does more often the more slow like sultry type vocals which you know that's kind of her signature and she does that so well but she has vocals like this in her uh either way i love the song i do prefer the single version but she still went in on this version this one's just a little slower a little more r&b 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 flavor to it uh but both are really good uh, but yeah, the one I gave my heart to. So let's go on to the outro. Con uh, came to give, came to give love. Oh yeah, came to give love. Let's go on to it. Baby girl, we the hey, back into that funk with the hip hop. to give love not much to say uh but it's just a cool cute little outro came to give my love to all my fans across the world love the the production on it it's, it's bringing back it's kind of an, an encompassing track of the, like the kind of sound of the album it's got the funk old school vibe it's got the you know the Timbaland Missy sound it's got that kind of hip-hop flavor all mixed in one track uh it's just you know a fun little way to end out the album uh, but yeah, that's, you know, that's One in a Million, the album. Uh, this was, Aaliyah is so special. But uh, anyway, let's get into my final thoughts. And I'll go over uh, my favorite tracks on the album and what I rate it. One in a Million. Uh, I really love this album. Like, it is a true body of work. Aaliyah really just stepped into her own with this project like i thought um aj nothing but a number was a really good debut album like it was solid but like this album just feels authentically Aaliyah. like she really stepped up her game uh and like the 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 the, the remnants of this album are honestly still felt today and like the the music that i generally love which is like moody dark kind of alternative r&b 
And this kind of feels like the, you know, the predecessor to, to the music that I know and love now. So you, you still feel her, her presence today in music. Like she's that, she's had that much of a hold on the industry and she's been gone for what, 20 years? I think this year it's 20 years. Like that's crazy that her legacy is still going on. Uh, but this, this album has those dark elements. It, it, it's moody. Uh, it's very mature too. She's only what, like 18 here, but it's this uh, mature, sexy, but it's not like overtly sexy, like uh, for most of the videos and stuff like she has on a bra, but like she also has that like kind of tomboy swag too. Like she, she has her own kind of aura, that tomboy sexy appeal that's just so authentically her and just is so authentically like sensual and sexual. And it just she's like really the whole package like the voice the looks just the the spirit the genuine personality you know um and then i really the album is just so cohesive too so shout out to missy and tamalin for like uh with Aaliyah, like constructing this real like this real like unique sound for her uh, and like shout out to the other producers on the project as well, because while it's like nine of the 17 songs are produced by uh, Timbaland and Missy, but like the rest of the songs, I feel like still fit in pretty well. So shout out to the other producers as well for like, you know, adjusting to what Aaliyah was and kind of fitting in and helping craft this, this world. Um, what else? Oh, I do also love, like, uh, talking about also, like, the sound and, like, how kind of, uh, like, how Aaliyah's sound has, you know, lived on. I love how innovative and futuristic and just how just, you know, how, how, how different it was for the time. Like, it's definitely something new, and that's something that's for sure. Uh, Timbaland's, like, you feel his, his hand in there. But I love how she was able to just kind of carve out her own lane in a time where there were so many stars, especially teen stars, because, you know, Brandy was huge around this time, Monica, like, there's so, uh, Usher was hitting it big too, and they were each able to kind of carve out their own lane, and that's why they're still all really around to this day. But I love also how, like, yes, this album is, like, futuristic and different, and, you know, Aaliyah's in her own lane, it, she still is able to kind of um, borrow from those classic, those classic uh, sounds and really kind of morph them into, morph them with like her futuristic uh, R&B sound. And like she takes um, like real old school, like 70s soul, like she has a couple covers, but like she takes just sounds of those and other songs that, that classic soul sound. She has, it, this album has a lot of like jazz influence. I really felt that I'd never noticed before, or maybe it's more like the album tracks, but it's just, it's got a lot of jazz in there, a lot of soul. Um, what else? Uh, like a lot of, a lot of hip hop, like a lot of early kind of hip hop influence, kind of late nineties influence. So I love those. Um, it just, it, it, it pulls from so many different areas that it's like, oh, like you feel the throwback vibes mixed with this kind of futuristic a viewpoint of what R&B can be and I thought it just all came together so well super cohesive album Aaliyah really carving out her own lane stepping into her own as an artist um and just really again uh making her impact felt for you know years and years to come and I honestly think she will continue to be felt um now my only like gripe with this album why I loved it I felt like this album was 17 songs, and I'm not even complaining about the 17 because I really enjoyed them. But I feel like within the 17 songs, we only really got maybe two that she really got to show off, her, like her full voice. Now, don't get me wrong, Aaliyah does some some great things with her voice throughout the album, and it's not all. It's I'm not the type of person who feels like every singer needs to like be like big Beyonce vocals on every song, you know, but. It's like she has so much in her and she doesn't really get to show it off as much. Like I said, there's only two songs that she really gets to show. And she's doing some interesting stuff with her vocals. Like I pointed out throughout the album, like 
her transitions and the flips up in the different registers and stuff. And I love her falsetto and how she plays around in the basement. And, you know, she's really known for that kind of iconic cooing over songs. You know, that's like her signature. I just wish that she got to show off her her, her all that she can do with her voice a little more, especially on this album, because I feel like that really could have taken it to the next level. Like it was already up here, but I feel like if we got maybe two or three more songs where like she's really just showing off that voice, this album could have been like, like out of here, you know? But you know, it's still a really amazing album. That's really my only gripe of it. Uh, but a, a really great project and uh, again a step up from her debut which was already good in itself but yeah I think that's all I got for my final thoughts uh, so now let's get into my favorite songs first up my honorable mentions I got a uh, four page letter one in a million and choosy lover the, the old school portion now let me be clear 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 Four page letter and one in a million are much more than honorable mentions like those songs are top tier not just top tier Aaliyah songs just like top tier songs in like overall like super amazing songs but I already came into the album knowing those songs really well and loving those songs so far but like my top songs I wanted to you know give some other songs that I hadn't been as familiar with or hadn't heard before a little more shine but those two songs are like top tier records so good from the production to the vocals everything about those and then choosy lover that probably would have been in my top songs if it hadn't been for the new school part the new school part wasn't bad it's just if it had only been that old school portion it, it that would have been like top notch again Aaliyah and the isley brothers it's just it works so well okay but now let's get into my top tracks usually i do a top three but one, this album had 17 songs, so it's harder to nail it down to a top three. And then I, there were just so many that I love, so I ended up making a top five. I think I did the same thing with Brandy's uh, Never Say Never album. You know, these these R&B 90s girls, like those second albums, they, you know, they said second album slump, who? Uh, but yeah, let's get into the, the top. Oh no, I did it for Brandy's Full Moon, but though, for... Though, Never Say Never was pretty amazing, too. Anyway, I'm rambling. It doesn't matter. Them 90s R&B girls had something good. But okay, let's get into my top five. Oh, sorry about the rambling. Okay, but uh, for number five, I got um, I Got Your Back. Uh, this one was the Jermaine Dupri track. I love the, I just love the vibe of this song, the hip hop feel, the the use of the, um, the like lean on me lyrics in there, and just Aaliyah's swag and vibe really coming out on that song really good one uh, my number four i got um never coming back this song was so interesting to me all the different influences i love the kind of oh this is another uh influence that i forgot to mention in, in the final thoughts area like the kind of beatnik kind of vibe like i love the the neo soul in there too like her like talking to the crowd it gave me like that Erica Badu, Jill Scott vibes, and they're like, you know, ladies, I've been through it too, and da 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 da, and da 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 da. Like, I love just the the vibe of that song, and Missy on the background being the crowd, and Aaliyah's like personality really shining through on that record. Really good one, really interesting, and again, love all the different influences from the bongos to the this to the that. Really great track. Uh, my number three is A Girl Like You featuring uh, Tretch. I thought that this was so interesting. Like this song, um, like it, like I said in the thing, I love the like old, like early '90s hip hop flavor and bringing in Tretch. Thought he was a great addition, and I love how it was more of a like rap sung duet than I expected. And the two of them like trading off ad libs and just kind of going back and forth and feeding off each other's energies. It was a really really cool track. Um, and now we're getting into my number two. We got uh, Never Given Up with, uh, what's his name? Tavares Polk. Baby Girl was singing on this song, as was Tavares. I honestly, like, this was one of those big vocal moments on the album. Like, she, the voice came out to play. And I really think that was uh, in big part due to Tavares as well, because uh, again, shout out to him for being, what, 13, 14 when that song was recorded and sounding like a grown man. Like, that voice was seasoned uh, and so deep and rich. Like, 
Because, like, like I said, at the beginning of the song, she was giving vocals, but it was a little more in her more sultry, uh, Aaliyah, you know, Aaliyah-like delivery. And then Tavares came on and was like, I was like, God damn. Like, that boy's voice was big. And then Aaliyah came back and said, oh, no, 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 I'm not getting overshadowed in my own song. Like, let me show you, like, I got this in me, too. And they were just going back and forth. That, that was a classic R&B, like, slow jam, ballad, duet. Like, they did that. Both of them went in. That was just chef's kiss of a song. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't even have anything else to say. Just, like, hats off to both of them. They both killed that record. And the vocals were shining, too. The production was beautiful as well. Just a really beautiful R&B ballad. Uh, now, my number one, I've got If Your Girl Only Knew. Now, this is one that I knew of going in, and I'd heard this song before, but it's one that I kind of overlooked, and I'm so glad I got that corrected now because this song is just so freaking good. Um, and it, like, and it's funny because while I was doing the write-up and I saw that that was a lead single, I was like, huh, that feels like a random song to be the lead single of this album. Because I never remembered, like, I liked it, but I never remember being too impressed with it. But hearing it again, like, it is just so immaculate. Like, the, like, uh, guitar or, or bass riff throughout, the, the, the vocals, the vibe, I think the lyrics are hilarious. Just the overall production is so pristine. Shout out to Timberland and Missy on the background vocals and the little like the little other eh, like all the stuff that was all the little sounds and stuff that were going on in the background it was just so good from start to finish and I didn't even mind that like most of the song is just like the chorus on loop sometimes that kind of annoys me because I'm like this could have ended but I was just vibing like the song is just so good I also love the visual had a like the you know the black and white and then Aaliyah being the only one in color and then like all that changing up the the visual was so appealing and you get to see that tomboy swag and that sex appeal that she has and just Aaliyah is just such a treasure honestly and it's just really one in a million is like the perfect name for this album and for Aaliyah because she's really one in a million like she's her own person and she always just feels so authentic uh but now I'm kind of going off on a, tang a tangent but uh if your girl only knew was my number one record so good Quick little uh, recap of my top five. I got number five, I Got Your Back. Number two, number two. Number four, Never Coming Back. Number three, A Girl Like You. Number two, Never Giving Up. And number one, If Your Girl Only Knew. Uh, so, so good. Uh, but yeah, now let's get into my rating. So I ended up giving one in a million a 9.5 out of 10, which is a, a full point up from... Uh, Aging Nothing But A Number, which I gave an 8.5 out of 10. Uh, this album is so, so close to perfection. Just immaculate. Like I said, the the um, the the production throughout, how cohesive the album is, all the different influences, while still taking a step forward and making her own lane and being futuristic and, and just so different from so many other uh, artists at the time. Aaliyah, again, her her presence is felt still to this day, and I think it will continue to be felt for years to come. My, again, my only gripe, I just wish there were a few more songs where she really got to show off all that her voice can do. But I, I really love this album. Again, closer. You know what? I'm even going to bump my score up from a 9.5. I'm going to say a 9.75 out of 10 because... It's just so close to perfection. I just needed one or two more songs that she really got to show off her voice. But this album kind of, again, feels like the predecessor to the R&B that I know and love of today. Uh, but yeah, okay. Now I think that's all I got on uh, One in a Million. My final score, for now at least, is going to be a 9.75 out of 10. Uh, once again, happy birthday, Aaliyah rest in peace uh gone way way too soon uh but again you're gonna you're gonna live on forever with your art that you were able to put out into this world from the music to the movies i, I gotta watch some Aaliyah movies i haven't seen like romeo must die or uh queen of the damned in so long and i used to watch those movies a bunch with my sister uh but yeah 
Leave a comment below. Let me know your thoughts on this album. Let me know what your favorite tracks are, which you rate the project. Uh, don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends and family, and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Thanks for stopping by. See y'all next time.